So the name of my talk is What Our Earth Can Teach Us. I'd like all of you today to turn your attention to this image. When you look at it, what kinds of things do you see? For me, it's water, rocks, the collision between ocean and earth. In short, a boundary. In environmental science terms, we call this boundary an ecotone, or an overlap between two different biomes. These ecotones are extraordinary places. In particular, they are known to contain some of the greatest diversity in wildlife, species, and habitation. In particular, <laughs> they blend in such ways as if they have no boundaries at all. When we look at our globe as a whole, there are no true boundaries. <laughs> okay, I'm going in cycles. Let's keep going. Um, the Earth does not understand the lines that we have drawn on paper to divide one another. The Earth simply understands that at the point where these two regions meet, extraordinary phenomena begin to occur. Looking at the way our Earth is able to adapt to accommodate the light really started to make me think about the boundaries that we use in order to govern our world, about the oceans we use as excuses for our inaction to help our brothers and sisters overseas, about the distance we allow to recondition our minds into believing that there's some sort of different way we should treat people just because of various backgrounds. What boundary can we use to explain why the refugee crisis is the developing world's problem and not our own. This is an image of a three-year-old Syrian boy. His name was Alan Kurdi. He drowned in his family's attempt to migrate from Turkey to Greece. And I share this with you today because I, like some of you right now, was really impacted when I first saw this image. Somehow the ongoing migrant crisis that I heard about in the news seemed all the more realistic because there on the beach lay a child full of hopes and dreams and aspirations and now there on the beach lay a child too small to cry out for help. What excuses do we have as we stand in our homes pas passive and distant? Before we make any assumptions, we first need to establish some background information. Formally, a refugee is known as a person who has left his or her home in order to flee from war, persecution, or natural disaster. Based off the United Nations report, uh, more than a million refugees escaped to Europe in order to find safety just in the past year alone. And 353,000 of these people were from Syria, most likely due to the four and a half year ongoing civil war in the country. According to the United Nations also, 70% of these people are without adequate drinking water. One in three people do not even have enough food to survive. Two million kids are unable to receive education and four out of five people are living in poverty. Some countries, like Greece, are accepting asylum applications, but other countries, like Turkey, are providing only temporary stay, which, in turn, only prolongs the problem. This is coupled with the fact that although one million refugees filed for asylum applications, only 252,000 were actually accepted into the country. The process is long, lengthy, takes years, sometimes in advance for these people to receive the safety that they require. But where does the United States come into this? As I did some research of my own, I found out that in 2014, the United States accepted less than 1,000 Syrian refugees into our country, 853 to be precise. The numbers, embarrassingly small, were expected to rise this year. I'm sad to inform you that as of the start of 2016, only 3,287 individuals from Syria have been allowed into our country. 
The sad thing is that this didn't happen by accident. A lot of times, Syrian refugees are turned into the face of terrorism in the media. For example, when approached with the question, what would you do about the Syrian refugee crisis? Republican candidate nominee Donald Trump said, those people are not our problem. The other countries need to get together. The problem is that the other countries have gotten together. And now is the time for the United States to step in as well and recognize that the problems that these war-torn countries face do not stop at our borders. Every time we deny a child access to the care he or she needs, we lose another life that could have changed the future. Our future. <laughs> these problems start with the United States helping out. The boundaries that we set on our globe do not stop simply with an ocean. They are there to tell us that we are different, yes. But most of all, they are there to tell us what we already know. Our globe does not exist two-dimensional on a piece of paper. It exists as a whole, where no point marks the beginning, middle, or end. Our desire to help one another should be the exact same way. We cannot use terrorism precautions as a guise for our own inaction to help one another. This has to stop. This has to stop. Most importantly, what I want from all of you to take today is that you should not use distance as your reason to stay at home and not doing anything. Petitioning the government, giving a talk, donating money, really anything helps. The most important thing is that you are thinking with your heart and you are loving without your eyes. Only then can change occur. Thank you.